It was the summer, it was summertime, I should say, 53 years ago. I had completed second grade and was like most children looking forward to the next year of school, third grade. For a big reason, too. Just like here at St. Rocco's back then and our lady Mount Carmel, the third graders received First Communion in the fall, in October. So third grade was a special year and a special time for us. And so that late summer, my parents had gone away for the weekend and my older sister took me to Sunday Mass. We went to the Italian Mass. The celebrant that day was the new associate that had just arrived from Italy. He spoke no English at all. Communion time came. My older sister turned to me with a rather stark statement. She said, don't move. She got up in the queue and came up to me with the communion break like everyone else. And I was in the queue and I, I guess I didn't like her attitude. So I scurried up the front end aisle and knelt to the far end of the communion break. I figured, I have to go to communion and get that good seat and sure never know it. It happened though that the servers that day, Joe and Leo, were our neighbors. We both spoke fluent Italian. And so as the celebrant got to me, raised up the host, one of them said, he hasn't made his communion yet. And the celebrant looked at me and said in Italian, have you made your communion? I thought he said, do you want to go to communion? And I said, yes. <laughs> so he began to give me the host and the server grabbed his hand and said, he hasn't made his communion. And so he asked me the question again. And I said, yes. I got my communion. A few months before the rest of my class, and that was my first introduction to meeting Father Pat, the new associate. It was shortly after that, he left Mount Carmel for just a year to go up to our house in Niagara Falls, then with the students, to learn English. But when he came back, he was put in charge of the servers, and he was training us. And he couldn't remember all of our names, so everybody just became George. <laughs> he thought, this way, if I say George, everyone will answer me. So everybody was George for several years. Now, fast forward, many, many, many years later, I was ordained and I was asked by the provincial to go to help in our new settlement in India. And the priest in India, who was our superior there, under Vincent Pinella, was like myself and Father James, a young priest who had grown up in a mercenary church in Italy, in Bari, at San Vito, di Armani, a parish we've had for centuries. And one day he was telling his vocation story to the students in India. And I'm sitting there listening to him. And he's talking about what influenced him was that as a young boy, growing up in a mercenary parish, they sent the newly ordained priest to his parish who had just been ordained a few weeks earlier to be the associate. And he said, you know, the thing that inspired me when this priest came to our parish was how happy he always was. He was always smiling. Always. Nothing seemed to bother him. He had the most carefree attitude and I thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice to be just like him? And he looked at me then in the course of this conversation and he said, but well, you know who he is because he works in America now. And I looked and I said, who are you talking about? He said, Father Pat. And then I thought, you know what? He was right. The one thing as a child growing up that I remember the most about Father Pat was he was always happy, smiling. Even when his servers or his students would be screwed up or did something wrong, he was always smiling. He would be gardening out in the front yard, he'd be cleaning up or doing something in church. Nothing seemed to get him down. If you went to talk to him, his attitude was always, okay, we're taking care of it. <laughs> and so, when you think of today's gospel, where Jesus says to his followers, 
you are to be the light of the world, you may not have realized it, Pasquale, but for the years you have served, not just here in Cleveland and in the United States, but in Italy, you have been the light for many young people to know the gospel because of your joy, your happiness, and your service. And for that, we thank you. You know, 85 years is quite a milestone to me, but then when you never get excited or upset, it's easy. Everything is calm. Okay, it'll work out. But really, today's gospel and your birthday celebration is a reminder to us of what true discipleship is about. Jesus did not say to his followers, well, when you feel good, go out and be the light of the world. Be the salt of the earth. He said to them, you are the light of the world. Because wherever we go, you and I, we are called to bring that light of Christ that, was, that is within us to others. Now, Father Pan has done that beautifully all these years here at St. Rocco and his years he spent at Our Lady Mount Carmel, those years in Italy. He has been the light to others to see Christ, uh, to people who were sick in the hospital, he brought them the light of hope and comfort uh, to many who he blessed and sent to their final reward as they were buried. He gave to the family comfort and the light of hope uh, to young people who he taught or inspired by his own example. He gave the light of enthusiasm and zeal for being Christ-like to others. And that's what our faith is about. Our faith is not in what awards or a human achievements we gain from people, but our faith is about simply being wherever we are, in whatever state of life we're in, in whatever job or vocation we are called to live. Uh, our call is to be the light of Christ. And Father Pat is an example to us of how to live that, with calm, with joy, with ease. Uh, he is accepted as a religious, Every obedience given to him, he has served the church with great faith and great strength. He has been a good witness and a good example. Now, I have to tell you, he had little hobbies. I don't know. He still has. He loves gardening, and uh, of course, he has that beautiful garden in the back here by the old convent that he and Santina have taken care of and, and grew vegetables and flowers. Well, at the time at Mount Carmel. There was a small little garden in the front around the statue of St. Peter in Alaska. Now, Father Pat loved to work in that garden and plant flowers and took care of it. But he also had another talent. He was thrifty. If he saw a good deal or a sale, he really monopolized that. So I remember him pulling into the drive one day at the rectory. I was answering the phones at night working at the rectory as a student. And he said, I need help, George. I said, what do you need help with? Oh, I got fertilizer. It's in the car, it was on sale. Now the garden was about the size of a confessional. And he opened up the trunk and I think there was 300 pounds of fertilizer. I said, what did you get so much for? Oh, it was a deal. One of the other joys he did there for years is he was the person, the Shopper, one of the main men who would go out and prepare things for the summer festival. So he would start early around February, this time of the year, and he and Tree Sanchez would get in the car and disappear for hours. They'd go shopping. So one day he said to Father Marino, he got home very late. He said, Push well, where were you all day? Oh, we went to shop for the festival. Where did you go? Detroit. <laughs> Father Marino looked at him and said, Detroit what? Michigan. We got a deal. A few days later, a semi-truck pulled into the schoolyard, filled. Father Marino goes up and says, what is all this? And he looks at the bill of lading and it says, um, the purchaser was Pascal Rasta. 
He said, Pasquale, what is this? For the festival. We got a deal. An entire semi of prizes. I think it took about 10 years to use all of them. But it was a deal. So it shows that his, his spirit of enthusiasm in ministry wasn't just in the church building, saying mass, but he threw himself into the life of the parish, and that's what he has done his entire ministry and his entire life. I'm sure he learned it first and foremost from his parents what it meant to be the light of the world, from his own uncle, who was a mercenary and priest in Italy, and then also from the rest of his family as he grew up. Then as a young religious and as a young priest, uh, he enthusiastically uh, threw himself into bringing Christ to others. And so, Father Pat, as you celebrate 85 years today, a milestone in living, you also celebrate the fact that as Jesus has called you to discipleship, as he has called you to be his witness to the world, uh, we thank you for the dedication again and the zeal for how you have done that. We pray that you may live to be a hundred, only because we'd like another celebration. <laughs> but again, thank you. May God bless you and may each of us continue uh, to be inspired by you, the light of the world, so that we may today leave here and carry your enthusiasm, your smile, and your patient gentleness to others as we bring that light of Jesus to our brothers and sisters.
Like you join us. <laughs> like you join us. You are free to call this guy back here. His name is Daniel. And join. One thing here to say to you. Religious life, a special hours, is very, very, very hard to live perfectly. That's those who can. I try, but many times I need to see. Therefore, I give thanks to God and His mother, Mary. Thank you for coming, the altar service, especially those Pray for me every day, I know. This, is all, this young lady here in the front here always pray for me every day. Say the rosary, Tony Marina. It's beautiful. Somebody else told me that she always remembered me the rosary. And when we pray together, we stay together. Sabrak to prosper under the power of the Holy Spirit of God and the protection and the guidance of the Blessed Mother. To all of you and your family, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah.